Jason Masondale Jr., a.k.a. Jack-O-Lantern, is possibly the scariest-looking Spider-Man villain, and is honestly a very strange character as well, but despite that, I think he's a character that would really, really work in Sam Raimi's campier Spider-Man movies, so what if he was in them? Now, as far as who I'm picking to play Jack O'Lantern, I honestly had a really hard time choosing between two different actors, those being Tim Roth and Brad Dourif. I think they'd both be really easy fits for this role, honestly, but for the backstory I have planned for Jack O'Lantern, he needs to be a little on the older side, so I'm going to be going with Dourif, who would have been in his 50s by these movies. In Spider-Man 2, we see Harry Osborn early on in the movie, and he's looking over every newspaper, studying the man that he wants to kill, Spider-Man. But obviously, Harry doesn't know how to kill him. He doesn't know his name, and he has no fighting abilities of his own yet. That's when Bernard comes in, and Harry starts venting about how one day Spider-Man will pay, but Bernard just suggests putting his money to good use. He tells Harry about a man that he heard about in hushed tones during his time fighting in Vietnam, a man named Jason Masondale Jr., who now goes by the name of Jack Jack O'Lantern. He's a highly trained former Marine who was actually kicked out for being far too violent. Now he's a merc that will kill anyone regardless of collateral damage as long as the money's good, and Harry seems very interested in that. We then cut to Jack O'Lantern in action, but we actually don't see him very clearly. We just see the man he's about to kill absolutely shitting his pants in fear of the figure gliding towards him. We hear Jack O'Lantern creepily reciting lines from Sleepy Hollow, which we quickly learn is where he gained his inspiration for the Jack O'Lantern persona because I thought that would make sense. He then leans into the man's face and laughs as the screen fades. So now later on, we see Spider-Man swing through the city, following the disastrous planetarium party. His night has just been so terrible, it's probably been the worst night of his life. But now instead of him losing his powers, he gets into his first fight with Jack-O-Lantern, so his night goes from bad to worse. And now, we can see Jack-O-Lantern in his entirety now, and we can tell that he's not all there, he's more than a little bit crazy. Now this fight is epic and goes all over the city. We get to see the full extent of his array of weapons and hand-to-hand -hand combat training. Spider-Man was already kind of dead the dumps before this, and he just gets his ass kicked during this fight, showing that Harry's money was well spent. We also see how little Jack O'Lantern actually gives a shit about putting others in the line of fire, as he regularly distracts Peter during their fight by putting people in harm's way. Now in the end, Peter manages to outwit Jack O'Lantern, and he takes him out with one of his own weapons. So now the movie goes the same for a while. Peter still loses his powers, he quits being Spider-Man, and he tries to make amends with Mary Jane. However, in between all this, we see Jack O'Lantern, who's now in the hospital, and he's unconscious with his arm handcuffed to a hospital bed. And the first time we see him, the doctor tries to take off his mask, but there are actually defenses that don't allow the mask to be removed. Now the second time we see him, a nurse goes in to routinely check on him, and he just quickly sets up out of nowhere like a serial killer, and he just looks towards her with his blankly expressive pumpkin face. Creepy. He then easily breaks out of the handcuffs before we get a long sequence of him going around the hospital, killing doctors, and cutting out all the power. So now, instead of the burning house sequence that we got, Peter instead discovers on the news that Jack O'Lantern has taken over the entire hospital, and he learns that Mary Jane is actually in the hospital. She was visiting her sick mother that she mentioned to Peter earlier, the one that could barely get out of bed to see her play. So now, Peter has to try and save MJ from this terrifying villain without his powers, while also trying not to clue anyone into the fact that he's Spider-Man. So we get a true Sam Raimi horror sequence, where Peter just has to, you know, kind of go around the hospital and try to avoid, you know, all the danger that Jack O'Laren presents, while also saving people along the way. In the end, he barely manages to get MJ and her mother out of the hospital unharmed, but then Peter overhears that Jack O'Laren got away, and Peter clearly feels guilty, because if he were still Spider-Man, he probably could have stopped him. 
So now later on, Harry asked Doc Ock to kill Spider-Man in exchange for the precious tritium, since Jack O'Laren failed to do what he was paid for, in all honesty. Then when Doc Ock brings Spider-Man to Harry and he learns he's Peter Parker, that's when Jack O'Laren shows up. And he looks down at Peter tied in the chair and says, Nice work, Osborne. He then removes his mask for the first time in the movie and says, Who we are underneath our masks can be far scarier than the masks themselves. He gets to do another creepy-ass monologue while Peter is quietly breaking free of his restraints. We get an epic final battle between Peter and Jason, a fight which actually causes the entire Osborne Manor to burn to the ground, and Jack O'Laren actually ends up being killed in the fire. Harry then tells Peter, who has his mask back on, where MJ and Doc Ock are, and the movie goes the same from there. But then at the very end of the movie, we see Harry sifting through the rubble of the manor, and he finds his father's Green Goblin equipment, setting up Spider. Spider-Man 3. So why did I want to make a video about Jack O'Lantern? I'm, I'm very well aware that he's kind of an obscure villain, and I know that Jason Mason Dale Jr. didn't actually stay in the role for long. I know he became Hobgoblin, and he had a really long arc in the comics where he died for a bit and then came back later. Like, it's just a long, complicated story, and I hope you guys can understand why I couldn't do that. But why did I put him in the movie in the first place? Well, just honestly because I thought he was cool. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I just think he's a really cool looking character. And I think that he could really bring out the horror in Sam Raimi's directing. Because yeah, I mean, a lot of people resented Sam Raimi for abandoning the horror movie genre when he started doing the Spider-Man movies. Because yeah, I mean, he got his big break making the Evil Dead movies. And, you know, Spider-Man's a far cry from Evil Dead. Uh, you know, so he liked to throw in like little bits and pieces of horror in the Spider-Man movies. And while he did a really great job with Doc Ock, don't get me wrong. I think that, you know, he could have used a villain that's actually meant to be, like, properly terrifying. And yeah, that, that could have been Venom. He didn't do that with Venom, sadly. Uh, but Jack O'Lantern, man, I think he could be a really intimidating villain because uh, he's got a really great look. Uh, but he's also got a bit of the campier stuff that I know Raimi was a fan of. And yeah, I mean, whether they went with Tim Roth, Brad Dourif, uh, or whoever the hell else they went with, I really think that if they hired a, a, an actor with a distinctive voice uh, that's able to act through a mask where we can't see their face, they could really make this a role that stands out despite being so minor. Because, yeah, I know that his role in the movie was probably smaller than some of you were expecting, but he's not as big of a name, and honestly, I just thought that there was enough going on in Spider-Man 2. I thought there was a perfect amount of stuff going on in that movie, and I tried not to let this interfere with the rest of the plot too much. Now, as for my decision to kill him off at the end, again, it's the same thing. I just I couldn't really think of a good reason for him to be in Spider-Man 3. I think that there was already plenty going on in Spider-Man 3, and they made mistakes, and I don't think Jack O'Lantern not being in it was one of them. Um, I think Jack O'Lantern not being in that movie was for the best. Um, and honestly, you know, as far as the first movie goes, you know, I think it should have just been the Green Goblin. So, you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Spider-Man 2 is really the only movie I could imagine putting him in. And, you know, since he was a mercenary, I thought of the idea of having Harry Osborn hire him, because, you know, this is before he becomes the new goblin. I still hate that fucking name, by the way. Um, this is before that. Um, so it made it would make sense for him to hire somebody else to kill Spider-Man, in my opinion. And I consider the Spider Slayers. Don't get me wrong, I really did. And maybe I will do the Spider Slayers one day. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. But, you know, I thought Jack O'Laren, he, he's just a character that stood out to me. And he I think he would really appeal to Sam Raimi's sensibilities. Uh, not to mention, he got the second highest vote in the in the poll I did behind Craven the Hunter. So since Craven was done, I'm like, okay, let's do Jack O'Laren now. Okay, so uh, long story short, I thought he was cool, and I hope you guys think he's a cool character too. I really hope I did this character justice, and I hope I didn't let anybody down. Again, the fear is real when it comes to uploading these videos. So uh, let me know exactly what you think about it in the comments down below. Also, give me more what if recommendations in the comments down below. I said that really weird. Um, uh, whether that's about Spider Man, uh, Hulk, X Men, or you know whatever the hell else you can think of, just let me know what you want in the comments down below, and I will try to do it. Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends and all your various social media platforms. Uh, make sure to ring that notification bell because there will always be a video every day, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure to stay up to date on all future uploads and make sure to follow me on Instagram, Rinsler underscore productions, and I'll see all of you in the next video.